Hey there, welcome back mitochondriacs. It's Dr. Peebler again for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. I have been really looking forward to discussing this topic with you. This is one of my favorite topics regarding mitochondria, and that is the topic of mitophagy. It is something that when I learned about it for the first time, I said to myself, this has got to be very important. And this was prior to seeing those graphs of mitochondrial heteroplasmy and how the wild type and the diseased mutant mitochondrias balance out with certain amounts of mitophagy. That was really before I saw how important it is in so many different pathologic conditions, such as Parkinson's, whether it be metabolic diseases, whether it be cancer, it's a critical topic to talk about. And I'm so excited to talk about it with you today. So in this video, we're going to discuss what happens when mitochondria become defective, dysfunctional, and even disease promoting. What does the body do to those mitochondria? What are the important quality control mechanisms that allow the mitochondria to continue to function adequately and maintain cellular homeostasis and adequate energy production and bioenergetics. How does mitochondrial fission relate to mitophagy? And when that process is happening adequately, what does that look like? These are the type of questions we're going to be trying to answer today in today's video. So stay tuned. So mitophagy, mitophagy, an evolutionarily conserved process that selectively removes dysfunctional or superfluous mitochondria by autophagy. This is mitochondrial selective autophagy. I'm sure some of you in the health space have heard about autophagy being a very hot topic right now. This is autophagy or recycling of mitochondria specifically it is pivotal for both mitochondrial quantity and quality control. Mitophagy is a complex and dynamic process that involves two steps. First, dysfunctional and damaged areas of mitochondria are identified and selectively enclosed by double-membraned autophagosomes. Secondly, the autophagosomes fuse with lysosomes to form autolysosomes, where damaged mitochondria are degraded by hydrolases. So that's a mouthful. Essentially what's happening is effective mitochondria are determined that they need to go. They are identified, they are tagged by an elaborate process, they are surrounded by this autophagosome, and then that autophagosome is fused with another organelle called a lysosome which then destroys that entire structure. And then at the bottom, it says impaired mitophagy refers to the inability of cells to effectively eliminate dysfunctional mitochondria, leading to their accumulation and disruption of mitochondrial function and cellular homeostasis. That is a huge point. Many diseases stem from the impairment of mitophagy. And it's something that, especially from a disease prevention standpoint, we have to identify and we have to assist in optimizing that process. And here it says, when mitochondria are subjected to stress stimuli, such as nutrient deficiencies, hypoxia, mitochondrial DNA damage, inflammation, and the use of mitochondrial uncouplers, we'll talk about uncoupling of mitochondria in future videos, Damaged mitochondria can lead to the release of reactive oxygen species, ROS, or apoptotic factors, resulting in cellular damage or apoptosis. So the process of apoptosis is pretty beautiful, and there are a couple key signals that tell the cell that things are going really bad. One of those is the release of cytochrome C, which is on the inner mitochondrial membrane, to the rest of the cell, which can lead to apoptosis. And under certain circumstances, that can be absolutely life-saving and self-saving, but we don't want excess apoptosis happening when it doesn't need to happen because then you're having to make completely new cells, which takes a lot of energy and potentially leads to problems. So we want a way to take the portion if there is actually a small portion of a damaged mitochondria, be able to seal that portion off or repair it and avoid apoptosis if we don't need it. And that's why mitophagy is so critically important because it helps preserve what the healthy mitochondria and even parts of mitochondria that are still healthy while getting rid of irreparably damaged portions. So this is a really cool slide because what we have here is we have a graphic that shows increased reactive oxygen species, mitochondrial DNA mutations, chemical toxicities, nutrient deficiencies, all which lead to a decrease in the redox power across the inner mitochondrial membrane. And we have a decrease in membrane potential. That's what this signifies. So we have a mitochondria, we have decreased membrane potential, and it's going to get tagged by proteins, pink and parkin. And then that is going to signal this autophagosome to then surround that mitochondria. And then it's going to fuse with the lysosome. And the lysosome has a bunch of proteases and different enzymes that can help break down various structures. And it's going to get degraded. This is essentially the simplified version of mitophagy. 
There are multiple mechanisms of mitophagy, but there are kind of two major pathways. We can have hypoxemia or pseudo hypoxia because look what it signals through HIF1 alpha. So HIF1 alpha is expressed and it allows for mitochondrial specific autophagy through that pathway, or you can go through the pink Parkin pathway, which is what we saw in the previous slide. And that's a different process, but essentially they both lead to the same outcome. We have fusion with the autophagosome and ultimately the destruction of that damaged mitochondria. Of note, if you remember from the cancers and mitochondrial metabolic disease videos and the hypoxia inducible factor videos, we know that either hypoxia or pseudo hypoxia, which can drive Warburg metabolism is intimately involved in that process. And this gives us the first hint that mitophagy is not exactly black and white when you have a disease like cancer, because what can end up happening is that there's excess HIF-1 alpha expression. And then you have pathologic destruction of even healthy mitochondria because we have excess mitophagy. And we'll talk about this probably in the next video, but there is in a lot of cancers, a lack of mitochondrial biogenesis. And then you have excess mitophagy going on. Mitophagy is obviously a very important process and we want to optimize it, but we don't want excess mitophagy without the making of new healthy mitochondria, which is one of the reasons why cancer cells have to rely on Warburg metabolism because there's no longer any mitochondria left because the mitochondria are getting destroyed selectively and then there's no signals for mitochondrial biogenesis. And so they're not replaced. And then now there's no other energy except for Warburg metabolism. So this is how mitophagy can get hijacked in cancer in particular. I want to talk a little bit more about the diverse mechanisms of mitochondrial quality control. And I'm going to read this here. Selective autophagy of mitochondria, known as mitophagy, is an important mitochondrial quality control mechanism that eliminates damaged mitochondria. We've talked about this earlier in this video. Mitophagy also mediates removal of mitochondria from developing erythrocytes. So that's a physiologic process. Erythrocytes or red blood cells do not have mitochondria. So getting rid of them is part of that process and contributes to maternal inheritance of mitochondrial DNA through the elimination of sperm derived mitochondria. So only the mother's mitochondria are passed on to the baby. So what happens is there's actually selective mitochondrial autophagy or mitophagy of the father's mitochondria early on in conception. So there are three major pathways of mitochondrial quality control. There's going to be an unfolded protein response, and that's where misfolded mitochondrial membrane proteins can be degraded by basically proteases or enzymes that break down misfolded proteins. So as you can see in the middle here, they're actually taking selective damaged proteins, and it's actually being transported to lysosomes. So it's almost like a mini mitophagy for specifically damaged proteins. Pretty cool. And then the third pathway is mitophagy, where they get rid of an entire mitochondrion. But you'll see that's not actually completely true, because what will happen is, let's say that these, are, these lightning bolts are actually damaged portions, or it could be membrane damage, it could be protein damage, it could be mitochondrial DNA damage, it could be a host of different accumulated damage. But what can happen is, and this is a really neat thing, is where mitochondria can then shuffle around the damage to where they can then cause a fission event where it sequesters off the damage, and then it's able to maintain what's left of the mitochondria, the healthy mitochondria, and then just take the damaged portion out to the autophagosome and actually cause mitophagy of just the damage, which is really cool. This is why why there's no good or bad with mitochondrial fusion and fission. They're all critically necessary. And that's why if you remember back in the first portion of the last video on mitochondrial fission and fusion, I said that under healthy or normal circumstances, fission is very important for mitochondrial quality control because of this exact process right here. There's a mixing and then a fission that occurs to help segregate off the damage. And then only the damage part is destroyed or recycled. This is just another representation of the mitochondrial quality control. So you have a healthy mitochondria and damaged mitochondria. One of the ways that it can actually help with quality control, and I think we alluded to this a a little bit the last time is that you can have fusion events that helps spread the love of all the mitochondrial defects and helps just maintain function. However, that's not the most ideal situation. What will then happen is that you'll have some portion of the mitochondrial damage walled off and then allowed to get into the lysosome for destruction. And that could just be a couple of proteins or damaged components, or you could have a true fission event that allows the damaged part to be segregated off to have mitochondrial specific autophagy or mitophagy, or you could have the other pathway where it's under severe 
stress, hypoxia, or physiologic times during erythropoiesis, which again is when red blood cells lose their mitochondria. So there's just a host of ways to help preserve the energy system and the bioenergetics, which is critically important. But as critically important is the excess and reactive nitrogen species. When you have ROS and RNS in a healthy situation, those can signal to the nucleus and can upregulate important enzymes, can even upregulate mitochondrial biogenesis. But that being said, when they're in excess, they can damage cellular components and really mess up the entire cell and even a chain reaction of reactive oxygen species and oxidative stress, which can lead to inflammation and other downstream effects that we don't want and can lead to disease. So the, mi the mitochondria and the cells have amazing repair and quality control mechanisms that allow us to maintain functional operations. This is another representation of a very similar, the same point that I was making earlier. So you have a healthy mitochondria, you have some stressor that happens and causes some degree of mitochondrial damage. That mitochondrial damage can either go fusion and spread the love around so it can maintain some degree of function and it's basically the damage is diluted out or you can even take that mitochondria and you can split it through fission and selectively segregate the damaged portion so it can be removed via mitophagy. Or if the damage is so widespread that even by having a fusion event and trying to spread out the damage, there's still either continued stress that accumulates or the damage is too widespread, then it's going to be a terminal response and you're not able to basically fix the issue. So it's going to then be removed via mitophagy as a whole. So in recap, today we have talked about the importance of mitophagy. Mitophagy is mitochondrial specific autophagy, and it is critically important for maintenance of health and the minimization of mitochondrial heteroplasmy and even the reversal of mitochondrial heteroplasmy. It's critical for mitochondrial quality control, and it's critical that the body uses the other mitochondrial dynamics, such as fission and fusion, in order to minimize cellular damage and to maximize energy output. In the next video, we're going to talk about what happens when there's excess or insufficient mitophagy and how that relates to cancer. If you like videos like this, please like it, share, subscribe, and until next time.